presence is amazing. God, you're so good to us, Lord. We are your kingdom people, Lord. We are your children, Lord. And Lord, you're here today. We celebrate you, Lord. Help us to be on fire for you as we get closer and closer to your coming and your return, Lord. Wake us up, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.
We want to be sanctified and holy. You are holy, Lord. Is that what the scriptures say? Be holy for I am holy. Not enough of that being heard or taught enough today. That we could be more like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And walk the walk that he wants us to walk. Even though we're not perfect, we should strive to be like him. Amen? Amen. To be like Jesus. He said, if any man say he abideth in him, let himself also so to walk, even as he walked. It's possible to be set apart, and we're going to be on fire. This is what we want to do. Praise him in the storm, amen? Whatever storm you're going through this morning, can someone praise the Lord in the storm and say, I don't care what's going on, I'm praising my Jesus. Can someone say amen? We're going to praise Jesus this morning. Praise him in the storm, hallelujah. Sure by now that you would reach down, wiped out tears away, stepped in and saved the day. But once again, I say amen, and it's still raining as the thunder rolls. I barely hear you whisper through.
the Holy Spirit is very welcome here, and he's welcomed in my life. Uh, I had an incident that occurred Thursday this past, so my wife totaled our car and she didn't send her here. Uh, she, they tell me she's doing well, she's going to recover. Uh, she suffered multiple lacerations, head injuries, and two broken ribs, but she'll be with us soon, I know. Thank you, Lord. Uh, do we have anybody new here? Could you raise your hand if this is your first time here? Welcome. I'm sure by the time you are here, we've got some folks. Today is the first Sunday of the month, and that means Communion Sunday. We will be having Communion later on. Uh, we had a wonderful show on Friday night, uh, open mic night, and we had some other churches entertain us, along with our own church entertain us. It was a great show. For those of you who missed it, make sure you catch it in March. It'll happen again. Uh, we have a food pantry, which Brother Brian handles. If any of you need food or want to donate food, please see Brother Brian. We have two things that occur after church's service is over. We have an altar call up here with Pastor. We have fellowship in the back room, for those of you who want to join us in some fellowship. Pastor still has good victory walk on Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. on the radio. WDER 1320 a.m. and 92.1 FM. He also has a YouTube following and it continues to grow, but still the more the merrier. So to join, go online to Sean Theodore, S-E-A-N-T-H-E-O-D-O-R-E, -E, and click subscribe and you'll be part of the group. Uh, we ask that if you have a cell phone that you put it on vibrate. So the church will off during the service, it will not disturb us. Uh, we don't have a collection here. We do have a donation box over there on the wall. And every little bit helps us to continue to grow and serve the Lord, this church, and others. If you're watching out there, you can also give by going, <coughs> pardon me, by going to AbundantGraceNH.com and click on the donation box. Um, we're still in need of additional musicians and things up here. You notice when people switch around and it would be nice to have a permanent drummer and a bass guitar. And if you know anybody that would be interested in doing that, please have them see faster. Uh, Christmas is here. And as in last year, this year I'm going to do it again. Probably, probably next week there'll be a big box up there all wrapped with a big slot on the top to allow you to donate to a gift for pastor for Christmas. Um, every little bit helps. Um, a gift to throw it in there or whatever. We'll expound on that more later, I guess. Um, we, <laughs> we have, uh, as one of our parishioners, a writer. His name is Ray. You may have met him. Uh, I'm going to bring Ray up here to talk to you for a few minutes. Right? Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I, like Ron said, I'm Ray, Ray Thompson. I'm 76 years old. And by trade, I was a software engineer, uh, not a writer. March 1 through March 30 this year, I had a profound repentance experience. Um, I decided that I wanted everything God had for me. And I had led a life that was not uh, too good in God's sight. But God nightly woke me up, starting with my childhood. He revealed his hand in my life up to age 75. He brought events, uh, names to mind that I had long forgotten. And he told me, write a book on anecdote, of anecdotes or short stories about each event. Well, this was a shock to me because I had never written a book, uh, I never published a book. This was in March. Uh, and the book was published September 12th. 
I want to affirm on a beautiful sunny day and gave you the title. I had a picture that I had taken in 2005 uh, on a walk, and it was a, uh, I called it the light at the end of every tunnel. And he said, call the book His Light at the End of Every Tunnel Revealed. And that's the name of the book. He repeatedly assured me that if I would be honest or open about my past, he would set many free from sex and drug addiction. By revealing the breadth and depth of his grace, mercy, and love. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I can't explain to you, but it is so awesome. When you see God's grace and mercy, there is nothing in this world that compares to it. Um, a little bit about it. It's a, it's a progressive story. It includes childhood antics that affected my future, my first marriage, born again experience, pride and success in business and church, falling away, divorce, drugs, illicit relationships, organized crime involvement, and God's restoration many years. This was over a period of probably 30 years of my life, all of this. It's endorsed by several nationally known Christian leaders, as well as Sean. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> uh, it can be purchased at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Walmart. If you're living in Australia or Taiwan, it can be purchased at Booktopia. In the UK, through Angus and Robertson. It's published by a, a, a publishing company called New Harbor Press, and their website you can view a video trailer which introduces the book. You just search on the book name. And I have about 18 copies, of, well, I had 18 copies. I think it's down to 12 now uh, on the table over there. You're welcome to them. If you want one, I, I would ask you, if you wouldn't mind, to, after you read it, to provide a review. And there's an insert in there that explains how to do that on Barnes & Noble. I am a product son who returned to the father Amen. and that's my story. All I can say is praise the Lord and he told me this testimony and I already knew a lot, not everything, but quite a bit when we talked before and how God brought him through such an amazing journey so Again, if you're watching and you want a copy, you know where to get it. And uh, those who want a copy, Ray is so <coughs> generous to just put the book out, let people take it, and you will be blessed because it's a really well-written book, and it will encourage you, and it will show God's grace and mercy. And uh, it's kind of amazing how you wrote that book because our message today is kind of kind of piggyback off this a little bit, which is pretty God-like, isn't it? How God just does these things so. I know the kids are getting a little antsy, so we're going to have the kids head to the children's at this time, so we're going to dismiss the little kids. That kid's a runner. That kid can crank, so I have to take them out on the trail with me at some point. This is funny. God bless you guys. The kids are going out. So again, if you don't know how to give to Abundant Grace Church, you watch it online, it's a, as Ron said, and it's Abundant Grace nh.com and it's right there on the front on the home page you can just uh, give whatever the Lord is leading to help support our church so we keep this place running and pay the bills and be able to Amen. help out as we need to so without your donations we wouldn't be here so we thank God for your faithfulness to be obedient to the Lord and um, if you're here and you don't know how to give just go right up to the box we don't put a plate out we don't pressure anyone we just let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you and direct you so Praise God for his goodness and for uh, the good people over there. God bless you. We're happy to have you today to join us. I hope you're blessed. Amen. We're in part five of our series entitled Acquiring Wisdom, and we need wisdom. But we're going to be talking about something that's kind of very closely intertwined in, with uh, Ray's book in a lot of ways. So, I mean, I wanted to go a different direction. The Lord's like, no, you're going in this direction. The Lord, I'm like, okay, Lord. 
You sure? No, but you mean, when the Lord's sure, you don't question him, right? You just do what the Lord tells you. Can someone say amen? amen. Do what the Lord tells us. So we're going to go right into the scriptures. And I'm going to pray and get started. And I pray that the word of God blesses you. How many people want to hear God's true word? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody likes it, but not everybody has a different perspective on it. But we need the word of God. That's what we really need to hear. So we're going to get right into the Bible. And we'll pray and get started. Lord Father, thank you for the word of God. Help us, Lord, to acquire your wisdom through your word. Because wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, I get wisdom, and all, with all I get, and get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7. We just praise you and honor you. Bless the service. I get out of the way, and I just ask you to speak as you want to speak in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There's a calling for all of us as children of God. You know what that calling is? To be sanctified. And sanctification is a process that happens. How many people in here have given their life to Christ and they're born again? If you're born again, can you say amen? amen? If you're born again, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Can someone say amen? When you're a new believer in Christ and you receive Christ in your heart, it says old things have passed away. What is the old things? The old life, the Adamic nature, the sin. We still have the Adamic nature, but the sinful lifestyle is now changed. But even as a believer, we can fall into sin, as you can tell by Ray's book. You can do all kinds of things, immorality, debauchery, crime, sin, <laughs> drugs. It can go with alcohol. It can go from many, many different directions. Now, anyone believes that sin doesn't sting us, it can, if you're living in it. Now, we're all sinners. We all sin and come short of the glory of God. That's why we got Jesus, amen? Without Jesus, we can do nothing, and we got his grace, and when we mess up, he's there to forgive us, and we thank God. Then we have grace and mercy and kindness, he's compassionate, and he loves us, and he's amazing. But God has an amazing plan for you, too. Do you know that if you're saved, God says he has chosen you, he has called you to a great something, a great destiny, a God-given destiny. Do you know you have a God-given destiny? He says, I, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should bring forth fruit. You know you're ordained and chosen of God. You were chosen by God before the foundations of the earth was ever created. So I can't tell you how many years ago, because if I said millions, I, I, I don't know. God's always been, so I can't give you the years. But he knew before the foundations of the earth, which is, you know, more than 6,000 years ago, he knew that you were going to be saved. You were going to be called. He loves you. He cares about you. And if you've been in the mess, if you've been in the pigsty, if you've been a prodigal like Ray was in the book, God loves you. He cares about you. And you know what? We all can be prodigals. We can all stumble and fall. You say, not me. Well, then ask King David. He fell with Bathsheba. Ask uh, Solomon. He had a thousand wives. I don't know how he handled them all, but, you know, I mean, one a day, you wouldn't see his wife for a thousand days because he has a thousand of them to get to. So I don't know how he handled it all, but the Bible says he had 700 concubines, 300 wives, just about a thousand plus. And uh, so Samson, Delilah, you know, the, the list goes on and on. These men of God falling short of the glory of God, amen? But God says that he wants us to be sanctified. He's a God of grace. He's a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, ten chances. He loves you unconditionally. I want to talk about living a sanctified life. And I love giving seven points because God is a God of seven, completion is number seven. And how many people today really want to live a sanctified life? I pray that we do because you know what sanctification is? It's part of what we're supposed to be as Christians. 1 John 2, 6 says this. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. If you say you abide in Christ, you should walk as he walked. Amen? And when you stumble and fall, he says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Aren't we glad we have that? We confess and he cleanses and washes us. He's not angry at you. When we sin, we get feel guilty and we feel like we can't come to the throne. We've done too many things that are bad. And no, the Lord says, come to me. It says, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. That means God's forgiveness. His mercy, his compassion for you. And it says that you might find grace to help in time of need. That means he's a God of grace. 
So when you make mistakes and you really blow it, because we all do, right? He says, come boldly into the throne. And why do we need to be living a sanctified life? There's reasons. We've got to get to it. But I'm going to get you to the seven points. And I, I don't think a lot of people like to read these scriptures today uh, in the evangelical realms as much because um, we hear a lot of prosperity and grace and this and mercy and love and kindness, which is great. But how many people really break these scriptures down in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? You're under the law. Don't be teaching on these things. Well, I'm, I'm in the New Testament. I'm going to be reading out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Y'all ready to hear the word of God? Amen. Buckle up, fasten your seatbelts, because you know me, I preach the word, whether you like it or not. You know what? I preach the word. This is what I follow. And if you have an interpretation outside of the, the word of God, then you know what? I still love you, but you know what? This is God's word. Anything outside the word is just an opinion, it's just a philosophy, it's just somebody's ideas. It's just, but the word of God is the true word of God. It's powerful. It is inspired of God. And you know what? This is not philosophy. This is the living word. This is not somebody's vain jangling. It's the living word. It's the sword. It's the power. It's the shield. It's everything we need. So what does God's word say? It says this. We're going to go to verse 1 of 1 Thessalonians 4. It says, Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, talk about Christians, believers, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So I want to stop there. Paul was instructing uh, the Christians at Thessalonica, the Thessalonians. So what did he say? He says, we encourage you to please God. That's what it says. We want you to walk and please God. So here's what we need to do. You want to live a sanctified life, living a sanctified life? We should always try to strive to please God, not man. Amen? We should be pleasing the Lord. Not say something. I'm going to preach a soft message because I want to please man and I want to try to build up the flock and I want people to come in. No. I'm here to please God. And if you don't like what I preach, you see those two doors over there? Don't let them hit you on the way out there, buddy. I love you, but I'm not capitulating. Love you, I want you to be here, but if you don't like what I say, then you know what? Hey, I'm not forcing you to be here, so I'm just preaching the word. I love you, but I'm standing on truth. We need to please God, amen? That's the first thing we need to do. How do you please God? You read his word. How do you please God that you should let your light shine? How do you please God when you make mistakes, you repent? How do you please God? You choose God's ways over everybody else. You say, you know what, Lord, I am putting you first in my life. That's how you please God. So what did Paul say? You should walk, you should walk to please the Lord, right? How do you please the Lord? Tell the truth. How do you please the Lord? Clean up your language. How do you please the Lord? Say, what would Jesus do? If you kind of look at your life that way, what would Jesus do? That'll help you please the Lord even more. Would Jesus accept this type of activity? You know, and then if you feel in your heart that he wouldn't, then it's probably best not to do it, you know? And when you make mistakes, how do you please the Lord? Say, Lord, forgive me. I fall short. You know what? He's a God of abundant grace, amazing grace. It's abounding. He forgives you. He loves you. How do you please the Lord? One of the biggest ways to please the Lord is believe the Lord. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if you want to please the Lord? Believe him. Follow his word. Believe him. Have faith in him. And keep going. Because if you don't have faith in God, you know what? You're not going to obey him. Did someone say amen to that? You won't obey God if you don't believe him. You have to have faith in order to please God. Amen. So the first way to live a sanctified life, Paul said, hey, you know what? You've got to please me. Please the Lord, not man. You know what? Man may tell you to do something. But you know what? People tell me certain things to put pressure on me. Oh, you shouldn't preach against this or preach against that. You know, you should. I said, sorry, but I'm going to anyway. Because I'm pleasing God. That's your interpretation. I said, well, you know, that's my interpretation. I just read line by line. Precept upon precept, the word of God. And then I just leave it to you. 
If you don't believe what I believe and you don't like what I say, I still love you the same. You can disagree with me. It doesn't mean I don't like you. It just means I'm continuing on preaching the word of God, following Jesus, pleasing him. And if you know what? No man follows me. I'm going to still praise God. If no man wants to hear. I'm going to praise God because Paul said, all men forsook me. Demas forsook me. Loving this present world, he forsook me. But all men forsook me. But I stayed the course. Paul fought the good fight. He finished his course. He kept the faith. Let's fight the good fight of faith and please the Lord no matter what persecution comes, no matter what person attacks you, no matter what's going on. God said, put me first. Praise me and God will reward you. And then you become sanctified. You're the light. You know what's supposed to be salt and light? The Bible says occupy until he comes. You want to see God do some things in your life and your destiny and your future? You've got to be light. You've got to be salt. You know, if the salt that lost its savor, where would, shall it be salted? It's therefore good for nothing. If the salt is losing its taste, you know, it preserves. We're the light. You know what? We don't, if you want to shine something bright, you don't want to put a dim light covered with shades and everything covering over that light. You need to get that light bright. You're the showpiece. You're God's showpiece. You know that? To this dying and lost world that needs Jesus. Okay, so we need to be sanctified. One, we please God. Two, what does it say? Verse one, it says this. It says, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you. He's trying to exhort them and teach them and admonish them. And it says that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and please God, so ye would abound more and more. The second thing is he wants you to abound more and more. What does that mean? When you get saved, he wants you to grow. The Bible says, grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need to abound more and more. Are you, a, are you growing in Christ? Are you still in the first grade spiritually? Or are you growing? Are you growing in the Lord? Are you growing up? Are you failing the same tests over and over and over again? And you never pass them. You're still in the first grade spiritually. You're not abounding. How do you grow? Here's how you grow. Start getting in the word of God. Start reading it. Start applying it. That's how you grow. We need to grow as up as Christians. We need to get more mature as Christians. And when you do, you become sanctified. Don't you want to grow in the Lord? How do you grow in the Lord? Here's the biggest way we grow. And it's the most painful. It's in the valleys where we grow. The pain is where we grow. The discomfort is where we grow. The attack is where we grow. The hardship is where we grow. The adversity is where we grow. Amen. You know what? No pain, no gain. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Can someone praise God? Then you know when the going gets tough, the tough guy to get going. We gotta praise God. So I'm growing in the Lord. I am growing. I'm sanctified. And when things hit me, I'm gonna praise Him anyway. You know what? The, the devil wants to hit you and attack you and discourage you. So you'll throw in the towel and walk away from his plan. This is what he tries to do. But what you need to do is get up and say, no, I'm going to please God even if bad things are happening. I'm going to praise God even when horrible things are hitting me. I'm going to show everybody that I am the real deal. Those who praise God in the storm and when things are bad and they still love Jesus anyway are the people who really love their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and somebody praise Him. Somebody's got to preach this today. I'm, getting, I'm going to get into some uncomfortable stuff now, but I'm trying to hold back. A lot of people like to skip what's come, coming, but it's coming. It's coming up the pipe. You all ready? How many people have their seatbelts on? Get the seatbelt, get the airbag on, just in case, you know. God's coming. God's coming. It says, verse 2, it says, We know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. What are these commandments? To be sanctified. Let me read verse 3 now. Are you guys? All right, here we go. We don't like this, but we're going to read it. For this is the will of God. How many people want to do the will of God? We all want to, right? We want to do the will of God. Well, this is the will of God. Even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Wow, it's quiet. It's pretty quiet here. <laughs> It's the will of God. And then, what is the third point? Sanctification. It's the will of God to be sanctified. That's the first thing. We, what does sanctified mean? Set apart. Set apart in holiness. The Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, it says, follow peace, follow peace with all men in holiness. 
without which no man shall see the Lord. You can't even see the Lord if we're not following peace with all men and holiness. To be sanctified is set apart. Following God. Being holy if he is holy. Don't touch the unclean thing. Come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. Amen? Get rid of the idols. Get rid of the worldliness. Get rid of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. 1 John 2, verse 15 through 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I want to love Jesus, not the world. So what is it saying here? It's the will of God to be sanctified. So what is the third thing we need to do? You want to live a sanctified life? You need to be holy. Holiness, God's not going to take a filthy vessel and bring him into the promised land. God's not going to take a dirty vessel and bring him into to the greatness of the Lord. He wants to clean us up. doesn't mean we're a perfect vessel, but he doesn't want somebody who's like hooked on porn going into the promised land flowing with milk and honey. That isn't a good thing. You know what I mean? He doesn't want people who are, you know, swingers. Going in for Jesus Christ. We're going to be, I'm a swinger for Jesus. That doesn't work. That's what that's going on today. You know what? It's not, it's, not, it's not what God wants to have happen in our lives. Amen? It's sin. Okay? Pornography is sin. You know, lust is sin. Well, I know it's getting quiet now. He doesn't want us to be, you know, a girl's walking by with something that's very, very immoral on the beach. And then we... And then we take another look. And, you know, he wants us to look away from that as much as we possibly can. Amen? Amen. You guys that say, I've never glimpsed before. You lie. <laughs> We've all taken a glimpse once in a while, haven't we? We've all got an eye full of things we probably shouldn't have. Even the guy in the back there is acting all innocent, but, you know. <laughs> But we've all made these mistakes, haven't we? Can someone say amen? Yeah. I know it's quiet. We can all admit, like Ray admitted in his book. He admitted that he looked at things. I've looked at things. We've all looked at things. We've made mistakes in our lives. And we gotta, God says it's the will of God to abstain from fornication. So you want to be sanctified? One, you've got to please him. Two, you've got to grow in him. Three, you've got to be holy as much as you can. Not perfect, but clean your life up. Try to clean it up. Clean the language up. Clean the things up that isn't of the Lord. How do you get in the Word? We don't hear enough of this preaching on it. We hear grace, but grace in a righteous living is part of what God wants for us. Amen? Since you love me, keep my commandments. This is missing. Jesus says, if you love me, obey me. And I will come unto you and make my abode with you. Me and my Father will abide with you. Amen. Can someone say that? Don't you want to be abiding in the Holy Ghost? I want some Holy Ghost power. And how do I do it? To be set apart. That's when God starts filling His people. That's when strongholds get broke. That's when miracles start happening. That's when cases start getting won. That's when people start getting breakthroughs. That's when people start seeing miracles. It's when they lay down their lives as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. This is the word. You may never come back and see me again, but one thing you can say is I preach the word. You may say, I don't like you, but at least you stood on the word. And that's what we have to do today. God's looking for a holy church, a holy people. So holiness is part of it. Now it says we should abstain. What does that word abstain mean? To refrain from something that might bring us pleasure. Amen. To abstain from something that might bring us pleasure. I didn't abstain last night. I have to admit it. I fell short of the glory of God. I'm here to confess. I went to a nice Italian restaurant last night. Ralphie's Italian restaurant. I had a nice Parmigiano. <laughs> with all kinds of penne and sauce and bread. And, I mean, and I just, I ate it. It was like massive. I mean, there's no way you could eat the whole plate. It was except for me, of course, but you couldn't even play. I mean, that was like for a like a meal for four, but it was one. Was like, what is this? So I put it. I said, Let me take it home. I'll take it home. I'll have it another day. I had supper. I took it home. So I'm doing my Bible studies, and all of a sudden, oh 
back in that refrigerator, yummy. <laughs> it's a nice Parmesan. Eat me, eat me. <laughs> yummy. So what did I do? Could have refrained and says, you know, you know, I don't want to eat too much. You know, I got to you know, I got to stay healthy, and stay in good shape. I don't want to. You know what I'm talking about? When I'm running the trail, bouncing. <laughs> yeah. But no. The lust of the flesh. So I opened up the fridge and I looked and saw the nice sauce and the chicken. <laughs> it's just a little bowl. Just a couple little scoops won't hurt nobody. Scoop, scoop, threw it in there. Ate it up. Wow. A couple more scoops. <laughs> Let's go back in there again. Scoop up a second load. Before long, the whole box was gone. <laughs> Ugh. I can't sleep. I feel sick. Nobody, somebody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But we've all been there. But it says abstain from fornication. That means refraining from something that you really like. Now, that doesn't mean God's withholding something from you. I'm going to tell you what fornication is. Fornication, we don't want, is sex before marriage. Amen? If you're having sex before marriage, that's sin. But fornication just isn't sex before marriage. It isn't. If you um, look at pornography, that's it's illicit sexual gratification. If you're looking at pornography, you're fornicating. If you're doing things, I don't know what audience we have here, I don't know how old everybody is here, but doing things that aren't good to ourselves, that's immoral and it's not good. I know it's hard in this room to talk about masturbation. It's sin, it's evil, and it's ungodly. I, I, I've had the courage to say it. Amen. People don't say it. Well, it's sin. Amen. Because you know why that's not sin? Yeah, it is sin. You know why it is? Because you're still sexually fantasizing. And that's fornication. Because it's sin. It's any sexual gratification outside of marriage. We should be having sex within our marriage. Satan is doing all he can to have you, to having sex before marriage and he's doing all he can to stop sex after marriage so that adultery will happen. You see, this is how the devil works. Because sexual sin, it's the will of God that we do not fornicate. God doesn't want to take fun away from you. He doesn't. He wants you to enjoy it, but in the right context. Amen? Can someone praise God today? We don't hear this enough. Nobody's preaching it today. That's why when TV is on and nudity comes on, people don't even, it's, it's so desensitized. Oh, it's just a nude person walking by. It's not a big deal. You know, take 10, 20, 30 years ago, people see that on TV. Oh, this is on TV. <gasps> yeah. But we've been so dead and desensitized that nothing bothers us anymore. Amen. And you know what? The Bible says, Job says in 31, Job 31, verse 12, he says, it'll root out all my increase. You know, sexual sin, the reason why God doesn't want you to get involved in it is because it leads to worse things. Right. If you go to the, if you've ever found out the things that people do online today, it's so horrible. It just goes way, I mean, it gets as far as people with animals, I mean, beating people up violently for play. It just, what is it, sad? Sadistic. What is it called? Sadism? Or I can't remember. Sadism. Sadism. Yeah. Sadism. All of this stuff. And it's just, it continues to get worse. And then you get in bondage to it. The Bible says we should abstain from all fornication. Right. You say, well, it's just a little thing. I just looked. A little look leads to more things. We've got to work on that. So when you see something, just look away. And if you did look and you made a mistake, just 1 John 1, 9. He'll help you through it. He loves you. He doesn't want us fornicating. That's the fourth point. You want to be sanctified? You've got to be morally pure. You know? Amen. This is hard to preach, you know, sometimes. When nobody's preaching it as much. You, know, you go to church, you're not going to hear about purity. And, and, and you know, because all it is is all, all they do. This is what happens when sexual sin begins. It goes from a little bit, and then it leads to pornography, then it leads to fornication, then it leads to adultery, then it leads to lesbian, and then it, um, homosexuality, it leads to all, sodomy. sodomy, it just continues to go on and on and on, and just worse and worse and worse, and then you get the pedophiles and their perversion, and it's just horrible, I, just, I hate to say all this, but somebody's got to, the truth. this is the truth, I have to speak up. We've got to clean up our act as Christians. Amen. If we call ourselves Christians and then we go online at night and we're looking at porn all night, you know what? 
We one put one way in church. Oh, maybe I'm a nice godly. Hallelujah, Jesus. And at night we're doing things that aren't pleasing to the Lord. He wants you to clean that up. He wants you to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, this isn't of me. This isn't of you. This is not who I am. You know, you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You are holy. You are his. You are sanctified. You are set apart. We should abstain. It's the will of God to abstain from sexual sin. It's God's will. We want to do God's will, right? Let's abstain from it. Why does he not want you to touch it? Because it's an addictive power. It's like a drug. And it just makes you a slave. and brings you into bondage. And you're miserable. And then the devil's got you. And then you get stopped from your destiny. God has a destiny. Repent and say, Lord, break these chains that have me bound. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We can't go into these places, brothels, and all these people doing that stuff today. Brothels and, you know, prostitution. I mean, the list goes on and on. People catch diseases. It's just, it's, it's awful. You know what happens with sexual sins? It destroys marriages. It destroys families. It destroys your reputation. It roots out your increase because you're paying for it. And you know what? And you'll pay for it in the end. And if you're caught with someone's wife, then some dude might come out and find you. And then you're in real big trouble. Mm -hmm. Am I talking about patient up here? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It happens. Jealous husbands find out that you're messing around. And it's just, <laughs> we should abstain from it. Because God has a better plan for you. Amen? And if you stumble and fall, he loves you. Now let me read this. Verse 4. So how do we live a sanctified life? Please God, grow, be holy, and then the fourth one is purity. The Bible says, he that loveth pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. He that loves pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. How many people want to be a friend of a king? Jesus Christ. It says, you love pureness of heart, he will be your best buddy. He loves people who are pure. He loves people who say, I'm laying it down. I'm not going to be like the world anymore. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm going to be like Jesus. Jesus who was holy. Jesus who was sinless. Jesus who was tempted and tried without sin. Jesus who never, ever was impure with ever with a woman one time ever in his whole life. Didn't matter who it was. The Bible says he never sinned. He never lusted. He never fell short. He was tempted. But he beat the devil up like a good old, he took him behind the woodshed and gave him an old beating. The spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And you know what Jesus did? He quoted the word. How do you overcome? Defeat the lies with the truth. You know, you can come out in freedom. You can walk in victory. You can beat the enemy's lies. And you can be pure even in this society. We're in a tough society where we got Facebook and internet and TV and all this immorality. You turn on the radio. They talk about sex. It's everywhere. It's in our faces more than ever before. But here's the deal. We can walk upright, sanctified, and holy in a crooked and perverse generation because you are the light. You are going to be sanctified. You are going to be holy. God is going to do something in this church. He's going to do something in your life. How many people want to reach their God-given destiny? You know what Job said? I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid or lust over a woman? I made a covenant with mine eyes. You know what we need to do today? Make a covenant with our eyes. Make a covenant with our body. Say, I'm not going to be looking on a maid. I'm not going to look at this stuff. And if I do, I'm quick to repent real quick. I'm not saying you won't stumble and fall. But the thing is, we need to strive to not be fornicators. Amen? Amen. That's right. We need to be on fire for Jesus. Because Jesus is going to give you the best. He'll give you much more blessings than you can ever imagine. You say, I'm single. What am I going to do? I'm single. I want to mingle. <laughs> right? What are we going to do? Wait on God. He'll give you the best spouse you'll ever have. And it'll blow away any of those images that are on there that do you no good. This fake image. There's a demon behind the image. There's a demon behind everything you click on. There's a demon behind it. Satan is back there. <laughs> Here I am. That's satanic from the pit of hell, wanting you to click on it so he can hook you in with satanic disaster. He wants to destroy you. That's why he wants you looking at it. Why do you think he's tempting you? To help you? You think the devil wants to bless you? He wants to appeal to your flesh so you feel good, but you should abstain and refrain. We should teach our young kids to do that, our teenagers. Teach them young. 
that it's not good to have sex before marriage. I wish I would have learned that lesson, but unfortunately I was part of that whole thing too, just like Ray. But Ray got out of it. God delivered Ray after many, many years, many, many years. If you read the book, you'll see it. I'm preaching on exactly what's going on. He's a living testimony that God gave him grace and mercy. Even when he struggled all these years, he confessed it to me, and he was humble enough to do it. And sometimes when we're in bondage, the best thing you can do is be humble enough to go to somebody and say, I need help. Can you help me? I'm struggling. Can you pray for me? You know what? It takes humility to admit that we have struggle. It's okay to say that. Make mistakes. God will heal you. God will give you grace. If you give grace unto the humble. But if we hide it, it's not going to do us any good. We hide it because we're afraid. You know what? King David fell. So you know what? If you're struggling, you're in good company. You know, God loves you. He don't want you living that way. He's got a better plan for you. He's got the best for you. He's got a great blessing for you. Let me continue now. You believe me, most churches aren't preaching this today. Not that I'm saying, this is not something you're going to hear much of, unless you go to Abundant Grace, of course. And, you know, that's why you guys like keep coming. You know? Don't you guys like the word? Yeah. 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 Let's not water it down. Let's go. Okay. People are watching, oh, wow, the views are going down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what happened to our views? Well, put a like on this video, will you? Come on, man, help us out. <laughs> Where's the likes? We love it. <laughs> put a love on there if you can. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Your vessel. It says you need to learn how to possess it in sanctification and honor. Don't you want to give honor to God with your body? Guess, guess what? Guess who's living on the inside of you? Jesus. It says that we should not take our members of our body and join it with a harlot. The, body, the members of Christ and join it with a harlot. We have Jesus on the inside of us. We can't take our members and bring it to a, a harlot when Jesus is there. The grieving the Holy Spirit. Amen? It says flee fornication, the scriptures say. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Doesn't it say that? Amen, that's right. We sin against our own body. And when we're sinning against ourselves, we're harming ourselves. God has a better plan. Don't you want a good wife? Don't you want a good life? Don't you want a good husband? Don't you want to get pure now? If you're faithful now over your purity, you're going to be faithful in your marriage. You're going to be faithful. You're going to be a blessing. God will give you that intimacy that you need. He'll send someone to blow your mind. He will send the best. And you know, it says marriage is honorable and all. Right? It's beautiful. And the bed, undefiled. But what does it say after that? Hebrews 13, 4. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. A whoremonger is a fornicator who, who's sexually active as a, as a person who's not married. It says God will judge that. How am I going to get into the promised land if God's judging me? For my sexual sin. Sexual sin is a disaster for Christians. This is the biggest tool the devil wants to use to get you. He wants to get you with this. He wants you because you feel lonely, empty, I need something, and it makes you even more empty. You go after it, and you feel like it's going to give you pleasure, it gives you that quick pleasure, but then 10 minutes later, you're more miserable than you've ever been. Because sin doesn't give you long-term ha happiness. Sin takes you into the pit. That's all it does. Jesus is the one that gives you happiness. You can resist that, go to the Holy Ghost and start praising Him, put your hands up in the air and say, I'm going to worship Jesus instead. I'm not worshiping that image. I'm not worshiping that person. I'm not worshiping that idol. I'm worshiping my God and praising Jesus, and I'm going to glorify Him. Can someone glorify Him and say, God first, I'm going to live a sanctified life in a crooked and perverse generation. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Almost done. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. It says the lust of concupiscence. You said, what is that, concupiscence? <laughs> yeah. It's a passion of lust. It means you're passionately, excessively, you're just consumed with it. It's trapped you from your blessing. It's trapped you. It's the thing that's stopping you. You're holding your blessings up because you're bound to it. 
And that'll hold you back. Hold you back from your spouse. Hold you back from your blessing. Hold you back. Why would God enter you in? Are you going to mess it up with this sexual sin disaster? How are you going to go anywhere for the Lord? You're going to get caught eventually doing it. Yeah. You, how many ministers fall? It happens all the time. I'm on guard all the time myself. Well, I can be in danger just like anybody else. You've got to watch it. You've got to be careful. The devil wants to get us. He's trying to destroy you. He's trying to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your re re reputation. What does Proverbs 22 1 say? say? It says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, Amen. and loving Amen. favor rather than silver and gold. You know, your reputation is more important than millions of dollars. Amen. Millions of dollars. Yeah, you may get a lot of money, and the Lord will bless you, but the best thing is your reputation. Amen. Don't let the devil ruin your reputation. Take that body and nail it down and say, no, I'm crucifying this flesh and the lust. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Crucify that flesh and say, no devil, fl no flesh. I am not going to do what the devil wants me to do because I'm not a servant of the devil. I'm a servant of the King of Kings. And it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies anymore. The Bible says, the sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Because we're not under the law. Sin will not dominate because Jesus, his power, his restraining power is on the inside of you. And he will help you overcome. Because if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Son will break every yoke, as Ray, he'll tell you. Now you know why God wanted me to preach this one today. Now look at verse 6. It says, that, you, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Defraud means taking something wrongfully without the knowledge or consent of. Of the owner. Don't defraud your brother. Take something from them. Harm them in some way. Sneakily hurt your brother. It says, in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such... As we also have forewarned you and testify, you will get chastised if we're doing things that are not of God. So we need to love our brethren. Amen. How do you live in sanct uh, sanctification? Love one another. I, you're gonna love, if you love me, you're going to be sanctified. If I love you, you know what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. You want to be sanctified? So walk in love. Love one another. The more you love, the less you'll sin. The more you love, the less you'll struggle. Because you know what sin is and lust and sexual sin? It's all self. It's lust. Lust is the opposite of love. Love suffers long. Lust doesn't suffer long at all. Love is kind. Lust is mean. Love, love is not selfish. Lust is selfish. It's the opposite. Love and lust are completely the opposite of one another. Do you know that? Completely antithesis. I like that word. Antithesis. <laughs> Sound the whole professional up here. No? Sound like a scholar all of a sudden. It's the antithesis. Lust of love. Let's love, not lust. Amen? Amen. You'll be sanctified. That's a fifth point. It says, For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but to unto holiness. Sanctification, he's called us. Uncleanness is a moral blemish. What is morality? It's doing what's right or doing what's wrong. Do you have morals, good morals? That means you're going to do the right thing. You're going to take the high road. You know, when you don't, you get forgiveness. That's the good part. God's not looking for us to have these external do's and don'ts and religion, perfectly trying to do things. He's looking for us to be obedient in our hearts. Amen? Our heart needs to change. You know what's on change my heart, oh God? Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May it, may it be like you. I want to be like you, Lord. Change my heart. Let's ask the Lord for heart change. We need a spiritual heart, a heart transplant. Get that dirty heart out and bring in a heart of flesh, amen? So we can praise God. Okay, verse 8 says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath given, who also hath given unto us his Holy Spirit, that despiseth means we reject his command. What does that mean? So the sixth thing we need to do is keep morality to be sanctified. Have good morals. Be good. Do good things. And then the seventh thing is keep the commandments. Don't despise his commandments. Oh, the Lord says this, I have to do this and that. Oh, I can't stand that. I'm not going to follow Jesus. 
Jesus is this, Jesus is that. And he said, oh, it's too hard. And we despise the commandments instead of saying, no, I'm not going to reject the commandments. I'm going to say, okay, Lord, if you say I should be sanctified, I'm going to work on it. The flesh don't like to be sanctified. Okay? I just want to read a couple more verses. It says, verse 9, it says, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Can we love one another? We need to do that. We're taught of God to love. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren, not just some. You've got to love all your brother, brothers in Christ. Amen? Whether you like them or not. Oh, that person's annoying. Love them anyway. You know, you're going to have you got to love the unlovely. Amen? And then what does it say? Verse 11. In that ye study to be quiet and do your own business. NYOB. Right? It says, do your own business. Get your nose out of other people's lives. You know, we're too busy with our nose and everybody else. You want to be sanctified? NYOB. We've got to stop with the Sister Jones over there. He's doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, we gotta have to, we got to focus on Jesus and our own stuff, not everybody else's stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Just be quiet and live a godly life. You want to be sanctified? Quiet down and be godly and get out of people's business, amen? Not everybody likes when I preach. I'm just reading the Bible. Am I reading the Bible verse by verse? And in verse 12 says, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, that ye may have lack in nothing. That means you're mature in Christ. You're not lacking anymore. That means be honest. Because if you tell the truth, you know what? People are going to see it. I just want to read two more verses. This is very powerful. I've got to close real quick, but I'm going to go real quick. You guys are saying, when is this guy going to ever end? He never stops. He never stops. I Woo! i got to give you some verses, man, so we can grow. Because you know what? We're not going to hear anything from the Lord until next Sunday when it comes to preaching. Unless you're on YouTube watching videos of people preaching, which is good. And I love it that you do that. Anyway. It says in John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, I am the light of the world. You guys agree? He's the light of the world. Amen. Amen. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Woo. Woo. Let's all praise God. Woo. He that walks after me shall not walk in darkness. You've got to get rid of it. Amen. Amen. Stop it. All right. I don't know. <laughs> but he's like, okay, this guy, I don't want to play God now. Stop it. Stop hurting yourself. I wish I could get in and just stop it. But I can't. It's up to you and God. But it says, he that follows after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. How many people want the light of life? You want the light of life? He's living on the inside of you. You have eternal life, by the way. It never ends. It's just going to keep on going and going. So let's walk with Jesus. Let's walk in the light. Here's the benefit. I'm going to close with the benefit. You've been hearing all this stuff about sexual sin and all this stuff. How many people want to hear about the benefit of walking in the light? You guys want to get ready for the benefit? Here's your destiny. If you live righteous before God, and when you make mistakes, get up, or confess it, keep going, and strive for holiness. Sanctification, it says, Psalm 112, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Sanctification, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The blessing, it says, The generation of the upright shall be blessed. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. You and those who follow you, your kids, everything, will all be blessed. It says, Your seed's going to be mighty. How many people want to be mighty? How many people want to be mighty? You've got to be sanctified. How many people want to be mighty for the Lord? How many people want to do great things? How many people want to see your future? It says wealth and riches shall be in your house. How many people want wealth and riches in your house? That's what the scriptures say. I mean, I don't know. God wrote it. We're wondering why we're not there. Because we're not sanctified. We Sunday, Sunday morning Christians. We're not sanctified. <laughs> I remember that preacher said that. We gotta come to church on Wednesday if we can. In the word. It says this. It says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Your righteousness endures forever? That means you know what? Your, your, sister, your generations are gonna keep on going. You're gonna be in heaven for all eternity. And it says, unto the upright, unto the sanctified. 
There arises light in the darkness. How many people want to be light in the darkness? The light at the end of the tunnel. The light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion to the righteous. You want to get compassion, you're righteous, just go to him, get on your knees and say, clean me up, Lord. I'm tired of this immorality, tired of this sexual sin. I am laying down my life, and I want to see a new destiny. Things are going to start changing for you. Now look at verse 6, and we'll close. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be an everlasting foundation. You know what? You're going to be the everlasting foundation. Be sanctified. Live a sanctified life, and God is going to bless you with wealth, riches, blessings, great doors, favor. Your seed is going to be mighty. You're going to have so much, you're going to have to give some of it away. Because God is going to bless you so amazingly. Keep praising the Lord. He loves you. Can someone glorify him this morning? <laughs> I never like to close this message without giving you a chance to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. All you got to do is repent of your sins, whatever it is in your heart. We can't, it's not a work salvation, it's in your heart. I don't want to live in sin no more. Two, call upon the name of the Lord. Ask him to come in your heart. It says, whosoever calls upon him, whosoever receives him. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, he prays, shall be saved. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You believe Jesus died and rose from the grave and he's your child? And if you believe that he will be his child, you'll be saved. Can we pray and receive Christ? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I accept you into my heart. Wash me in your blood. I surrender my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many people received that word today? Amen. God bless you.